Hi, my name is Yunak Hernandez, and I'm an application engineer at Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be going over the basics of reference geometry. Before me, I have my fly rail that I just designed, and I want to make a cut on the cylindrical surface here. Unfortunately, it's not flat, and there is no plane that I can start a sketch on. So the solution to that problem is to use reference geometry. Now what I'm going to use is a reference plane and I want to talk a little bit more about it. So I'll start off by using my present model that I have and begin using different reference planes. So to find it again, make sure you click on the features tab, select reference geometry, and you're here you'll have different options to planes, axis, coordinate system, point, a center of mass point, and I'm going to select plane. Now you can always just select a face, It'll go ahead and automatically radiate right here with this first reference. Face 1, I can make a coincidence or I can leave it on an offset. So there is now coincident. I'm going to pin this now because I'm going to be making several reference planes. I can click OK. And I want to make sure that I am currently not pre-selecting, so I'm going to remove that plane from there. And the next thing that I'm going to use, I'm going to use three points. So there's another point here. Put a point there and select this point here and I've added that one like that perfect click OK again make sure I'm not pre-selecting and I can always just click on an edge and then click on the face and have my perpendicular plane to that face and edge and I can click OK so those are just some examples of how I can make a reference plane I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to apply what I just did to my reference model so I'll go back so I'm back in the fly reel and again now I know my reference geometry where it's at make sure I'm in the features tab select reference geometry click on the plane and I'm going to select the cylindrical surface that I want to work off which is this one here and it's going to ask me for a second reference that second reference I'm going to use this current sketch that I made of a construction line and pick on the point and now that plane is tangent to that surface and I'm going to click OK. Now I can begin doing my sketch so my plane is already pre-selected so I can click on the sketch tab hit sketch and I'm going to select a rectangle and I'm purposely going to put it down here so I'll just snap it on there give this a length of 0.1 Now what I need this to do is I need this rectangle to align with this cylinder boss here. I could use sketch relations and involve the origin, but I'm purposely going to use an alternative method. What I'm going to use is a reference axis. So I'm going to go back now to my block and I'm going to click again on the features tab, go to reference geometry and select axis. Similar to the way that I made a reference plane it follows the same path. For this one I can select two points so I'll go ahead and select this point here select this point there and I'll have an axis. I'm going to pin this because I'm going to make several reference axes so I'm going to click OK. Next I can use two intersecting planes so I can use the front plane and I'm going to use the right plane there and you see right there in the edge of that, that center I can have a reference axis there as well And those are just some of the examples that I can use to make an access. I can also just select an edge. And there's my reference access there. So I'm going to pin this and hit cancel. Again, it's very simple to make reference access. And now I'm going to apply this to my fly reel. Now, what I'm going to use now is I'm going to activate what's called a temporary access. What a temporary axis does is that it'll appear anywhere that there's a conical or cylindrical face. And to access it, I can go up here in the Heads of Toolbar, select the Hide Show Items, and click right here where it says View Temporary Access. And there they are. Again, an axis is going to be shown that's showing you where the center of that whole cylindrical or conical face is at. And what I'm going to do now is through Sketch Relations, I'm going to put this point this midpoint here and align it with this temporary axis and I'm going to make it coincident. Now it's been aligned I can click OK. 
I can go on to the next step and remove material by clicking on extruded cut. I'm going to remove 0.03, perfect, millimeters of material, and now I did that. I don't need the plane or the temporary axis to still be shown, so I'm going to click on the hide show items, remove the view temporary axis, and also hide that plane. So I've been able to make the cut. I was able to use a reference axis. I was able to use a reference plane. Now what I want to check up is where the center of mass and the mass moments of inertia are. So to do that, I can click on the Evaluate tab and select Mass Properties. Here it'll show me again how much it weighs, the mass, it's showing me the coordinates for the center of mass, as well as the mass moments of inertia. Now let's say I want to calculate the mass moments of inertia at another point. If you look right here where it says Report Coordinate Values Relative to 2, you'll notice that I have the ability to add another corner or add as many as I want because currently I only have the default one on. So I'm going to get out of this mass properties window. So to create one, all I have to do is click on the features tab, click on reference geometry and select my coordinate system. And I'm purposely going to put this point here from that construction line that I made. And then I can change the direction of all the different, the Y direction, the X direction, and the Z direction. And I'm going to click for the X direction to go along this construction line. I'm going to use my flyout manager and select the top plane so my Y axis goes along there. Perfect. So now I can click OK. And now I have a reference coordinate system. So I'm going to click again on the Evaluate tab and select Mass Properties. And like I mentioned before, next to where it says Report Coordinate Values Relative to in the drop down arrow. And there's the coordinate system that I newly created. So I'm going to click on it. And now all my values have been updated for the center of mass, its coordinates, as well as the mass moment of inertia. So I'm going to click out of here. So in today's video, we will be able to cover how to create a reference plane, how to use reference axes, and as well how to create a coordinate system that can be used for reference and also help us find where the mass moment of inertia is relative to the origin. Thanks again. Why don't, if you like what you saw in this video, you can go ahead and give us a like. If you have any tips and tricks, please write down in the comment section and please subscribe. Thanks again.